Stand by. You're about to hear the voices of Montana. Well, we've got a show this morning that, that you don't want to miss, folks, especially if you're someone who has questions about property taxes and the latest appraisals that came out. Uh, good morning, folks. You're listening to Voices of Montana, the only statewide radio talk show. I'm your host, Aaron Flint. Today on the program, after an emotional meeting in Helena last week, uh, two leading members of the State Senate Taxation Committee are joining us on the program uh, today as we discuss the latest property tax reappraisals. This is over 36,000 Montanans have requested a review of their appraisals from the the Montana Department of Revenue. What happened to cause the spike in taxes? Uh, what's the history behind the property tax reappraisal process? And can anything be done to help struggling taxpayers? Uh, well, this morning we're joined live in our studio by leading members of the Senate Taxation Committee, Republican State Senator Jeff Essman, uh, who chairs the Senate Tax- Taxation Committee, and also uh, Democratic State Senator Kim Gillen, who is the interim chair of the uh, Revenue and Transportation uh, Committee for the Montana State Legislature. Uh, uh, Senators uh, Gillen and, and Senator Esman, thank you both for joining us this morning. Thank you. Glad thank, to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, Senator Gillen, I'll, maybe I'll start with you. Talk about this meeting uh, that you had in Helena last week. Uh, I know State Revenue Department Director Dan Bucks was there. November 1st, everybody got their property tax reappraisals in the mail. Uh, what, what did you hear at the meeting last week? Uh, give us an update on that. Well, the, the interim meeting that we had just recently had was the first opportunity to uh, begin to look at uh, the impact, uh, I guess, where the rubber meets the road for the pe- uh, people's new assessment notices have come out as well as their tax bills. So we spent around four plus hours uh, receiving public uh, testimony from folks uh, across the state about uh, residential, commercial, and agriculture. And uh, I think it was a good opportunity for us to begin to see uh, some of uh, what, guess what we'll talk later on this show about outliers and and uh, have them uh, be able to ask questions, tell us what the implications were, the reappraisal for their pieces of property. So it was really good uh, input, and there's some folks that uh, are very concerned about uh, what's going to happen and whether they're going to be able to pay their tax bills, and I think everyone on the committee really wanted to hear directly from those affected. And uh, State Senator Jeff Essman, you're the chair of the Senate Taxation Committee. Your thoughts on last week's meeting? Maybe if you want to give us a little bit of background on the, on the history of the process before we start talking about some of the issues uh, surrounding the property tax issues. Well, I, I think it's important to note that property reappraisal is uh, an issue that the legislature takes up reluctantly. It takes it up uh, on a every six-year cycle at this point due to provisions of the Montana Constitution that was adopted in 1974 that require that uh, property uh, in the state of Montana is assessed for valuation on a statewide basis. We're one of only six states that have that requirement. That uh, And uh, in, in the state of Montana, most classes of property are reappraised for their valuation on an annual basis. Ag, ag lands, forest lands, residential and small business commercial property are appraised every six years under existing statutes, and that is done under the requirements of the Montana State Constitution. And for folks that are just joining us, uh, you're listening to Voices of Montana. We're doing a, a special program today as we focus in on the latest property tax reappraisals with two leading members uh, from both parties, uh, State Senator Kim Gillen and State Senator uh, 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 Senate uh, Democrat, and then State Senator Jeff Essman, a Senate Republican, uh, both leading uh, figures uh, on this issue in, in their respective parties. Uh, the, the phone number, if you do have a quick question or, or comment, I do want to ask folks to, to, to be concise uh, with folks today because I know uh, – there might be a lot of folks who do want to ask some questions uh, specifically regarding property taxes, but the number 866-627-5483, uh, and I think uh, probably later in the show we'll hear f- uh, from some other legislators that may want to call in as well. I know folks in the Flathead area especially and, and, and in the SCOBY area I know have been have been talking a lot about these issues. Uh, maybe throw it out there to both of you in reading some of the news following uh, last week's uh, meeting uh, in Helena. It was reported that one whitefish couple, for example, on a, on a fixed income who inherited a lakefront home uh, saw the value of that home pegged at about 
uh, $375,000 in 2002. The value rise to then $1.8 million in 2008. Uh, their taxes were expected to increase to $13,000 annually. And, and basically what those numbers mean, this in the Flathead Beacon, is that is that, that that family could no longer afford to live there. And uh, talk about some of the issues that you're hearing about. Uh, 36,000, I think, uh, I guess we'll call them appeals or requests for reviews from the Department of Revenue. What are the issues that you're hearing about uh, and, and, and is this different, I guess, from, from the last go-round uh, uh, for uh, uh, property tax uh, reappraisals? Well, um, it, when the legislature was meeting during the session and we started receiving the data, um, statewide for residential properties, the increase over six years averaged around 54%. And... Um, Obviously, the, the the folks that we that were generous enough to come down and speak with us in uh, their in their, our nomenclature, they're called outliers, uh, people who are far beyond what the statewide averages are, and that's not to discount them. However, um, the policy that we we have a couple of ways to we try to mitigate those impacts, and we really have to just. We mainly do the policy for the averages, which is around 54%, and then we have a couple of programs that are called circuit breakers that address situations of low-income homeowners and disabled vets and and folks, um, elderly um, folks who have uh, low incomes. And so I think what happens when we hear those numbers, um, hopefully there aren't too many of them, but hopefully some of our programs, which are called circuit breakers, may address that. However, the real challenge is, is that how can we deal with people who are losing value? It, it, you, you have to, it's just like in your business, you have to go for the average customer as opposed to someone who may be a unique one-time buyer. So I, I know that doesn't help people as they confront those bills, but I think that explains a little bit about the kind of policies that we adopted. They were really towards the average range that we were seeing across the state in the residential area. And Senator Essman, uh, uh, your thoughts on uh, some of the things you're hearing, some of the issues that are out there, is this different from, from the last go-around, or, uh, or what are you hearing about some of the concerns as it stands right now, and, and maybe even the, the question of a call for a, a special, se- uh, special session of the legislature to, to maybe address some of these issues? The, <clears throat> in terms of uh, w- what I've been hearing from, in the people, from the people of Billings in my district, I mean, with respect to... Most homeowners within the city of Billings, Yellowstone County, uh, the mitigation bill uh, has worked uh, fairly well. Most are not seeing any significant increases or decreases. That's due to the fact that, you know, Yellowstone County did not have a huge number of properties that saw these huge six, seven, eight hundred percent increases in value. So the places with a more stable housing market that didn't see the roller coaster ups and downs did okay, but those who saw the huge skyrockets like the Gallatin and the Flathead, those are, that's where we're